welcome to Suzuki Piano. Um, I'm trying some things out, so a little bit experimental today with the camera, um, because I suddenly realised that having the um, the music up there really big might be really helpful and really pick up the detail a bit better. So this is from YouTube, but it is on my site as well without ads. You'll get ads on YouTube, but if you come to my site, or these are free. Um, but you don't get ads, which is really good. And I've gone to settings here and I've made sure that I'm on a, a high definition, which is um, this one up here. So HD, you want to have the HD on. That That's where it says HD. I've, I've put this playback speed to 0 0.5 because it's really important when you start learning a piece of music to really get the movement correct and the fingering correct before you do anything else and we, we always slow things down and then gradually speed things up if you rush them you're just going to learn mistakes okay so you have to slow them right down yes you do need to listen to what it'll be like eventually and the speed that you're expected to play it at the correct speed according to the book but learning a piece really requires you to break it down into segments now we're just going to do 10 minutes a day all the way through grade one or book one and we'll you know i think after, maybe after that once we get on to book two we'll do two lots of 10 minutes a day do you see and then maybe book three, three lots of 10 minutes, 10 minute sections. Yeah, <laughs> if that made sense. So let's have a little listen to it really slowly. Now, I do hope you've listened to it at tops at the proper speed. Um, now, because of the this is going on the podcast as well, and I'm not allowed to play music, so I have to be really careful. But we can certainly have a little clip. Um, now, it's, that's probably not very loud, is it? Oh, maybe. OK, so um, I could probably do with turning that up, but I'll sort that out later. So OK, etc. <clears throat> I'm no singer. You'll find that out soon enough. So where are we going to go on the piano? Right, we're going to go on to this C here. And if you look up there, the first note is a C. <coughs> Excuse me. And it is... Here's middle C, but it's the one an octave higher, okay? So we're going to recognise every time you see that blob on that line with the squirrely-whirly clef sign, that's the note you're going to play. And it's never going to change, ever, 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 okay? That's what's great about reading music. You know exactly where you are with it. So let's have a little listen. pretty easy. Now why are they different lengths? Well if you look at the first section one two three four we've got two thick lines and then the next bit we've got one line and that's because the double line means they're half as fast or double fast and half as long. <laughs> so let's count in one and two and three and four and just just for now okay one and two and three and four and just for now because actually there are four beats in that bar but that might be confusing if we count it uh, at um, that full speed for this exercise so that's what we're sort of doing we're playing four quick notes and then two longer notes okay once you get your head around that it all makes sense and we're going to be doing that all the way throughout. You can see all the way throughout we've got double lines, single lines, double lines, single lines. The double line is called a semiquaver. The single line is called a quaver. Okay, so let's just do this top line. Now, when we go up to this G here, unfortunately, we've got to move a finger up because it's a G and 
if we used our fourth finger on there, it would be an F and we want to play a G. So we're going to do a little bit of acrobatics, okay? A little bit of acrobatics like that. So. Okay, now you'll notice that I'm spending longer on the quavers and that's what you're supposed to do. So we don't want this, a big long space in between them. I want you to hold down that before you play the next one, okay? Now we'll be doing loads of work with metronomes and all sorts of things. So let's just play that through. Okay, that's all I want you to do today. Now I want you to practice it seven times and once you've got it seven times in a row, absolutely perfectly, your practice for the day is over. Okay, seven times. Try to keep it at a nice steady speed. Use the, um, the tracks. You can play along to the tracks as well, which is quite a good way to learn. When you uh, These on YouTube or on my website, you can play along to them without adverts. And it's really good because the whole of the book is, is here and you could, at the end of the book, just go right back to the beginning and just play along for the whole book. Now, the idea is to play your seven times with no mistakes. And if you make a mistake, go back and start your seven again. OK, this is really good learning. It's This seven times is um, a method that's been tried and tested and that gives you an idea, gives your brain the instructions and your fingers and all of that. They remember what they have to do and tickety-boo, suddenly you're a pianist. Okay, so this is a fast way to learn. We learn with our ears and we learn with our muscles as much as anything else, okay? And you mustn't make mistakes. If you make a mistake, you need to slow it down and regain that seven times correctly, okay? There we go. That's it for today. Um, welcome back to the Telltale Club. And uh, if you pop along to my website, you'll have all this information. And there's also the full PDF is available to download on my website. OK, back tomorrow.